The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has confirmed the first U.S. case has been detected in Washington state. A third case now of the coronavirus has been confirmed here in the United States. Health officials in Orange County, California, say a person there tested positive for coronavirus on Saturday. The World Health Organization has officially called it COVID-19. This now makes the first coronavirus death confirmed in the U.S. This is not the time for parents or teachers or students to be concerned with perfect attendance. There's a mutuality and there's a recognition of our interdependence that requires of this moment that we direct a statewide order for people to stay at home. It was March 2020 when Fullerton College shut down, a year of trials and tribulations as students and faculty adapted to virtual learning, and the sights and sounds of students in the quad was no more. A vibrant and busy place, now empty. Though with the battle of surviving the pandemic, there are still stories of overcoming barriers and hope for the near future of a return to normalcy. We sat down with Fullerton College President Greg Schulz and revisited that moment one year ago when the administration made the swift decision to suspend in-person learning. You know, when we initially began planning, even before we were closed, to put safety measures in place, and then we quickly learned that the entire county would really need to shut down to really promote a strict social distancing. We thought that maybe this would be a three or four week thing. We didn't know, but we were really planning with the hope that we could completely stay in place um, as a community, as a region, be socially distant, and make our way back potentially for the summer. Later, we learned that wasn't the case. So our focus really shifted towards what are the best ways we can support and deliver instruction and student support services in a new environment. What are the supplies? What is the equipment that we need to have in place? What are the resources? Students of the welding department are dependent on being able to use the machinery and having access to the materials in order to develop their skills and better prepare for the wide spectrum of skilled trades and professions in the field. But exactly how have instructors and students been able to continue their progress while virtual? Oh yeah, we got the boot right away. Yep. So, three days. Uh, three days, yeah. I even remember the last night we had class and everybody thinking this might be something kind of wild, yeah. And then it didn't. That was it. And yeah, so we got we were out for the rest of the semester. Had to finish everything there, and then we were part of the lucky group that got to do a trial run and come back and start the school semester like new. You know, it just was really limited to how many we could have in the classes. So we're limited to 10, 10 a class now, and then everything has to be separate can't have you know, multiple classes in the same area. There's a lot of limitations, but it's kind of made it a little more free here. We made it work though. Yeah, we made it work because we've had it where before it'd be 60, 70 people here a night. Yeah. And now it's like 20. So there's a lot more freedom for the students to kind of relax and it's not so much a fight for equipment. And it's a kind lot of, of enjoyed a lot it. Of, yeah, a lot of people have enjoyed it. Yeah, it's kind of spoiling mm -hmm. <laughs> in a way, yeah. The hard part really is just, yeah, you can't replace welding itself. So. In person. In person, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's been challenging. However, we've overcome a lot of things. Uh, some of the things we've done, you know, we have smaller, smaller group sizes, distancing, and, you know, just a different protocol. So yeah. it has been working. Uh, we haven't had as many people that have gotten certified. And the reason why is we haven't had as many people. So other than that, we're doing accommodating. So. I've noticed though that the the percentage of students who still succeed is still the same. Yeah, I, I haven't noticed yeah. a change in like you know being you know the lucky ones who get into a ten person class and then see that advantage and then take it. For the most part, it's been pretty much like what uh, Jordan said. It's pretty stable. So we've so. still been able to get students jobs and still getting them certified move, move them out into the workforce too yeah. that that hasn't changed uh, the demand for welding is still there and we still get contacted often for you know if we can send any students yep. their way and we do we still have been sending students out and they've been successful and that's maintained itself i think i don't know from what i've noticed too that when things started shutting down there's less traffic and a lot more on infrastructure i've heard from our distributors mm -hmm. that things have been going boomtown 
So. We are essential, so it's yeah, essential worked work. out. The theater department was eagerly anticipating the opening weekend of the production, A Chorus Line, but the timing of the school's closure kept the doors closed here at the campus theater. Theater arts professor Michael Mueller talks about what the future of the theater department will look like. In the performing arts, in most art forms, um, <clears throat> flexibility for an artist is key because you have to be able to be flexible. So I think this last year has been a, a growth uh, opportunity not just as students and faculty, but also as people in terms of our ability to adapt, make things work, find solutions for problems, understanding um, where limitations may lie, but also being able to use those limitations to find new avenues for creativity. Between not being able to produce shows and not being able to do the festival, um, that's our budget, you know, the, our budget, I mean, is significant. I mean, obviously there's school budget funding and things like that, but it's it's very minimal uh, in comparison to what we can generate revenue wise through shows as well as the festival. But again, you know, that's something where we're we're working right now to be more creative and to find new solutions to say, you know, this is what many theater companies, new or existing or long-term that have fallen on hard times or are currently enduring the pandemic, have to deal with on a regular basis. Uh, it's also hard to tell what the fall is going to bring. So will we be 100% back in person or will we be in some sort of phase process? So we have to be flexible and ready for whatever the future may hold and have a couple of different options in our back pocket to be able to try and experiment with. And I'm not really certain uh, what the parameters will be when we get there, but with our, we're using a lot of um, the other classes that are currently open as those, those test phases to say, see how things are working, uh, putting in place best practices. It's challenging to project in a theater with a mask on. You can't lie. But at the same time, you know, it just means that there are different forms of storytelling. Uh, there are different avenues. We can explore some of the technical elements and what, how they can help to support student learning in terms of those environments. When the campus shut down in the spring of 2020, the social science department had to rapidly shift to a new way of conducting labs and lectures in a way where students were still able to be interactive with the material. Some courses did return in the fall 2020 semester, but many had to continue functioning given the continued limitations. Yeah, it was a big shock. Oh no. Uh, my biggest concern was, uh, how are my students going to, how are they, how are we going to make this work? Um, because again, we deal with a lot of our, our lab is extremely, extremely hands-on. How are we going to deal with this? How are we going to make it work? Um, so I was concerned how my students were going to learn how they're going to be successful. Uh, we adapted to it and we, we did what we need to, we modified um, the labs as necessary. We've had to change quite a few things um, to make it, to make it work with a lot of the visual aids, but it was, it was very, very shocking. I was very concerned about my students and their actual learning and getting a good quality education. Now our class has become very visual. Um, we are using a lot of visual aids um, and a lot of descriptions have had to replace that. So normally where we would have um, very hands-on and students would actually handle the real bone, now we've had to convert to, um, again, the visual aids, lots of pictures, high quality pictures that you know, I took in the lab um, and also from my personal specimens, but we've had to very much convert to that um, and a lot of descriptions as well, very detailed descriptions. It's a lot to work for, um, you know, doing remote learning. It is a different, it is a challenge um, because it's, you know, it's something different. Um, students have adapted extremely well to it um, and they're doing very, very well, extremely well. The art department has continued to deliver art through student work as well as the resident artist. One of their recent events, Just Food, was presented in a virtual capacity so art lovers could view through their computers. It's proven to me that you can, you can teach a lot of things that I wouldn't have thought worked very well online, you know, because I'm seeing these uh, students do pretty complex work online traditionally, and I, don't, I just don't think that's easy, and that kind of blew my mind. That's the biggest takeaway I've come from it. And that it, I've learned a lot of things just about the students in general and just the relationships and how you can still have a good really good rapport with the students online. I was worried about that, you know? I wasn't sure if everybody was just gonna shut down and it hasn't been like this, it's been really engaging. It's also just made me really have a bigger respect for the students, you know? So it's given me a new respect for them. You know, I've always liked my students and everything, but it's just like really made me go, wow, you guys really stuck it out on this.
because they could have just said, screw it, we'll come back when this is over. And they haven't done that. <clears throat> because what I don't want them doing is going, well, I'll just wait till everybody's back on campus again, because there's a big chance that they don't come back. You know, I've seen so many people go, oh, I'm going to take a year off from college and I'm going to go do this. And then they don't go back. It's like, you need to keep that momentum going. Once you've got it going, you've got to keep that momentum going, finish it, and then go do whatever else you want to do. I have a friend, actually, I worked with it. I worked for me at Disney, actually. And she's amazing. And I look at that and I go, well, she's in Burbank. She's active in her career. She's, I think she's over at, she's at Warner's at Disney right now. I can't remember who, but I can get her to teach a class where I can go, can you teach an online version of it? And she'll go, yeah, sure. I can teach it from my office or I can teach it from home, you know, which is 10 minutes from my office. It, it opens the talent pool a lot. And I would love to get her in and teach a class. And if that's the only way I can get her to do it, then I'll do it. A lot of artists are excited um, to teach, I think. When you teach, you're going into an environment full of people, like-minded people, and you get to geek out and show them all this stuff that you love and try and educate them in a way that you know is valuable for them to have a career. So it's, you know, it's a, I think a lot of people just on that level love to come in with a bunch of students and talk about all these things that they love talking about so much anyway. Dancing requires students to communicate with their bodies and movements, creating a feeling in person that personifies human emotion. It is an art form that relies on performance to translate that emotion from dancer to audience member. These are some of the ways students were still able to display their talents. You know, when you talk about limitations, it's how did we overcome the limitations? And specifically for me is I just let the students know. I said, you know, usually when I'm in a class, I'm, I'm more hands-on. So you're gonna have to allow me to uh, verbally manipulate your bodies. Right. So I tried to keep the same approach. I tended to make it work with my students and they seem to thrive uh, by, by doing so, you know, and they're not, they're not only watching their own progress. Many cases, my students have their cameras on uh, gallery view too. So they're bonding with the other students where I did not necessarily see that in the face-to-face -face classes. In this instant, they seem to be bonding with people they don't know, and they're not afraid to talk to people they don't know. In the fall and this semester, there has been uh, less students. We've had to cancel seven sections of dance classes in the spring due to low enrollment because many students don't have the physical space you know in their houses to actually physically take a dance class so we're hoping in the spring to i'm sorry in the fall to build that up we have a lot of different classes planned uh, for on campus and hopefully those students will return we do realize we still have to build but at the end of all of this what we do hope or what my hope is is that we can have our face-to-face -face classes, but also build a healthy online component. We have shows every semester. So we have one fall and spring. So we have two shows a year. Uh, no, we were a month uh, before our concert in the spring when, when that was canceled. And um, we have not uh, done anything since then, but we're hoping maybe in the, in the fall to do something virtually. Fashion design. The construction of clothing for students in fashion courses is reliant on using the resources like fabric, sewing machines, and dress forms in order to learn the ins and outs of the fashion industry. The students and instructors work closely together to learn how to create garments and apply the techniques. But what types of adapting and solutions needed to be made? Right? We seem to have this expectation that they just know how school works. And everybody comes from a different background, a different high school, a different school, a different... And so they may all do things differently. So I try to be very specific and clear. Here's your assignment. And oh, by the way, if you don't know how to do this, here's a video on how to do it. I started a YouTube channel, you know, and it would be, a, you know, three, four minute videos. So it's that addition, those additional steps having to work around that have been the solutions, I think. On one hand, what's really, really cool is these students now have these videos to go back and reference. So in the classroom, it's like, I demo it, you'd either have to take notes or have a really incredible memory, right? But now they have these videos to kind of go back and watch over and over and over again. But if they're hitting a pain point, like if they're like, God, my machine is just not sewing, I'm not there to look at it and say, oh, you have it threaded wrong. 
And you would think, oh, I'll just, you know, we'll jump on Zoom and I'll turn my camera on and you can show me what's good. It's just not that easy. We can't expect anybody to go out and buy sewing machines. We can't expect anybody to have a dress form. We did like a loaner program where they could come and pick up a sewing machine. Some of the other teachers got really creative with, you know, instead of using the dress form, having the students use their own bodies. We actually do have some in-person classes. We are one of the few um, departments that were approved for in-person classes. There's just some things you cannot do online. Um, and so we're, we, we made sure, like as a department, what was a priority to teach in person? What could we figure out otherwise? You know what I mean? So that those classes that absolutely have to be in person have priority. But I think what has been really incredible is just watching these students um, learn and adapt to this technology. It's really cool to, to you know, see this happening and say to the students, you know, using Zoom and, and doing your assignments to submit to me and mailing me, you know, your projects, this is actually very standard and very routine for our particular industry. This is actually stuff you will be doing on a daily basis. I don't know that they would have experienced that, right? Because we would have just been focusing on skills, but because we're having to do it in this environment, it's like, oh, look, you're actually in the same environment you may possibly be in when you get a job in this industry. Learning a foreign language can already be a daunting and challenging experience in person. But when it comes to learning in a virtual setting and not having access to the interactive environment of surrounding peers, new ways of learning had to be created. My focus was more on the actual physical classroom setting. In a physical classroom, when you, when you explain something, or in, in the case of language, uh, when you're modeling like a particular, you know, uh, vocab or, or grammar structure, and you throw it out there, you can kind of look around and you can see the looks on the faces. You know, sometimes if people are understanding, you know, you can tell. If not, if they're going like this, you know, they're looking around, you, you realize they're not learning something. But, you know, with the whole Zoom thing, a lot of the students have their cameras off. So it's like I'm speaking out into the void and there's silence. So I don't know how to read the silence. So it's, you know, I have to continually ask them, you know, are you guys, you know, are you guys getting this? Or uh, especially in a language class when you're face to face, you know, it's, you, there's so, there's so many nonverbal cues that you get when you're with a person to that kind of tip you off that they're getting it or they're not getting it. And that's definitely a challenge through Zoom. So I would say that definitely that's the, the one of the biggest challenges. I was, a, I was a bit concerned, uh, you know, I sort of went into a flurry of activity of, of creating these, these goofy videos for my students. Um, most of them, I haven't made one recently, but most of them I made in those first couple of months. Cause I figured like these students, they're, um, you know, they're out there, they're gonna be zooming and they need something to grab their attention. They need something to help them sort of draw them into the screen because before, you know, I attempted just to in class, you know, just to sort of draw them in by, you know, different actual things that I would do in the classroom, just in person. So I had to try to reach through the screen as it were, you know, so by most accounts, the students said they appreciated it. Uh, they appreciated the effort um, and, uh, and they liked, they liked the videos. So yeah, I, th I would say that was a success. 23 plus million doses of vaccines have been administered in this state. That's larger than all but six nations in the world. We lead the nation this last week in terms of the lowest positivity rate in America, among the lowest case rates in America. Uh, we are making tremendous progress, but we're not there yet. Mission is not yet accomplished and we cannot put down our guard, we can't take off our mask, we need to be mindful, and we need to be stubborn about the safety interventions and health interventions that are essential to sustainably getting our kids back into in-person instruction. But I really believe that in a few months, not only we're we gonna reach that June 15th deadline, where you're gonna be back to some semblance of normalcy, but by this fall, once again, that bell will have rung and I expect people enthusiastically will be making their way into community colleges 
our CSUs and UCs and private universities as well as our K through 12 system. To my Fullerton College family, I miss seeing all of you. I know we talk about this a lot, typically in Zoom or by phone, uh, but I can't wait to see you on campus again, to be visiting classes. Things won't be 100% like they were before, we know that, but I'm certainly, like you, looking forward to the day when we can reunite on this beautiful campus, be back home at 321 East Chapman. I hope each of you continue to stay safe and to all of our students, stay safe, and we're extremely proud of you. And as faculty and staff of Fullerton College, we'll continue to do everything we can do to support you along your educational journey as you strive to meet your goals.